Hey YouTube, how's everybody doing? Hope everybody had a great Christmas and a wonderful New Year. And it's good to be on YouTube and the modeling community. Uh, glad Dr. Cranky's back and missed him. Picked up some new new friends in, in the community and, and glad to have them. Um, this is Mark Jolin94. Um, it's also Psycho Fish Customs. And I'm Mark, obviously. So, what I propose to do tonight is, is show you guys how to weather some vehicles. And uh, we're going to do a dry brush technique and a wet brush technique. And I think my wife met hurry when she told me I had to cram it. So I'm hoping that I'm okay. Anyway, some of the things you need. Some bowls. Whether they're these bowls or whatever bowls you want to use. They, but they need to be a color that you're going to be able to see what you mix in. You're going to need something to spray with, whether it be a, a garden sprayer, a hair sprayer, or a nose sprayer. Um, I fortunately have sinus conditions, so I get these every month. Um, you're also going to need some water. And while we're on this, this is a great measuring cup for those of us whose eyes are starting to go and we paint. It has great ounce measurements on it, and I think I paid a buck and a half for it at Walmart. You're going to need a grater of some sort, whether it be a, a lemon grater, or this happens to be a cheese grater, or if you can want to do wire over something, this is a little microwave dish, um, and stretch it out real taut so you can get, get it to grind, you're going to need that. You're going to need, whether y'all want some or not, you're going to need some cheap makeup brushes. I paid two bucks for this one. I got that free from my daughter. She didn't use it anymore. And I got these in a little set. And I actually use all three of these brushes for weathering. You also need a cheap set, and an underlying cheap set of these brushes. You don't want expensive brushes to do this stuff with because it will stain your brushes. You want a firm one. It's pretty firm. It's pretty dense. You want that one. That one's all right. But you want a soft one and a semi-soft one. You want chalk. I shouldn't even have to say that, but you need chalk. I get mine the cheapest place I can find it. This is all stuff that I've had for years from model railroading that I don't do anymore. And you need an X-Acto knife with an old blade in it. So, and 3 by 5 cards if you want to do it this way. But these little bowls are, are awesome. You uh, can actually grind your stuff up because that's what I did earlier and that's that's the same thing that came out of there and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, you know, this, is, this isn't rocket science, guys. This is real easy stuff to do. Dr. Cranky asked me to do this a long time ago and I apologize for not doing it sooner, but I've had real trouble trying to get into YouTube to do it. Um, just going to show you how to dry weather and mud up stuff. Uh, already did this tonight, lost my video. So here's some stuff that I've already done. Show you how, show you how tough this is to clean up. There. So, what you do is you grab your medium brush, one of them, after I get everything else out of the way, and your sprayer. Now you don't want to soak this stuff, you, you just want water on it. You do that, take your brush, dip your brush in the water, and you pick whatever thing you're going to do. This happens to be mud. Now, the dirt I live around 
is not like this and I also didn't get the right spot. This stuff will stick real good to wet. Now for some reason, and I'm sure somebody out there can do that, do this, is get real dirt to stick. I cannot. I can do real dirt as dust, but it will not stick to the model if it is wet. I'm sorry for not showing you guys what I was doing. So that's just a real quick example of mudding something up. I mean, I know that I went way around it and out of bounds, but I've seen some cars where I live that look like that from winter weather. So this is this was just something I ground up tonight. It was it was just orange and brown chalk ground up. Sometimes you need to crunch it up a little bit. And it's pretty close to the dirt that's around here because here's the real dirt that we have. We, I live in Northern California, and that's what we got. Um, this is just a dirt mix that I made. It's it's yellow and brown and orange, and you just you grind it up and and uh, get to the color. This is gray and orange and brown, and all you do it's real simple. Pink. Oh, so there's some orange. I'm not throwing my knuckles in there. There's some brown. Always, always, when you're done with, if you're using a grater, flip it in there because otherwise you're going to pick up for the next color if you're making another batch of color. Shake it up. This is all you got to do. That's a little bit chunkier than I like, but there, that's pretty much a match of what I just made, that I made earlier. Um, it, it's not hard to do, guys. Uh, I know Georgia and Alabama have some beautiful dirt and clay down there. Uh, you know, if you live in Utah or Arizona, you've got red clay or New Mexico. Uh, you've got just dirt in, in other places. Here's some stuff here that I call coffee grounds. I don't know. I don't know what it. What I don't remember how I mixed it. I've got to figure it out. But it's real, real dark dirt. And the colors, the basic colors that I use, guys, are regular orange, bright orange, yellow, white, brick reds. What I call that. Um, brown. That's real dirt. That's what I made. Gray, black. And that's about it. Um, you, any of those colors you use, you can come up with so many different qualities of color that it's pretty unbelievable. So we're going to dump this back over in here. I'm going to grab another model. This nice 62. I love 62s. Uh, Soaked it in purple power too long, believe it or not, and it broke. Purple power rocks, though. I, I love purple power, and that's come up a lot in the last couple of days. Um, best stuff I've ever found to, to do models. So if you, want a, if you want a dry rub, that's all you do. Dip your brush in, put, put it where you want it. I, I'm being extreme so you can see what I'm doing. I would never do a model that heavy unless it was just some old beater and, and then I might. Um, this brush right here is the best brush if you got heavy weathering to do and it's dust not wet. There you go.
and, and I know I know we all keep our shop tables pretty cruddy. I clean mine up, I try. This is a mess. I'm doing this on the kitchen table because it's pretty cold outside tonight. And I was I was granted use of of the table at a rental co at rental cost, so it's okay. Um, yeah, and, and if you're too embarrassed to go buy makeup brushes, go have your wife or your girlfriend or your daughter do it. They'll be glad to. They all they all know we're nuts anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. Um, some really heavy wet stuff I'll show on here because uh, this doesn't matter. This was a project gone way bad. Um, sprayer model. I got that pretty soaking wet. There's a reason. Get your brush wet. Dip in the color. Now you got to remember that when you're doing this, is you have a wet brush, it's going to pick up even more stuff in here. And that's not thick enough for what I wanted to show y'all. So, we're going to wet it some more. Dip it. Dip it. Put it back on. Now, little trick to this. You're done. That'll set it. It'll make it so hard to come off if you just put that little bit more water over the top of it. Tires. Tires are, are an incredible thing to uh, mud up. And I just made a great use for something here. Spray it a little bit. And I, I do mean a little bit. You don't want to do it too much. But since I was so sloppy, there you go. Not perfect because of the colors and dog hair. Now that's dirty. You want it worse. Now you can also do that with your fingers, guys. There you go. There's a dirty tire for you. You can also spray right here, run the tire. You don't even have to spray, look at that. Smuck it up. There's the tire drying out, so you're gonna get something good out of it. I'll show you one that hasn't been cut out real quick, just so you get a really good idea of, of what we can do. Of course, back into the clay color. Seems to be a little bit browner than it was before. So, there's another tire. Meantime, while you're doing that, I'll entertain you with a little bit of grinding noise. You can see how I make this stuff. I mean, like I said, it's not rocket science. There. That's all there is to it. Take a brush, mix it up. Here's a pinch of what I just made compared to the dirt that I have here. That's pretty stinking close. If you guys, uh, let's see, I'll do one more light side for you and I'll, I'll get out of your hair. Let's see, I'll do a different color, a little different brush. Again, this is a freebie. If, if you know anybody that's a beautician or, or works retail, um, you know, that picks up odd stuff, you got it made. There you go. That's just a different color dirt on, on that Chevelle.
you know, dusty, nasty. Um, then you take another brush, taste, take this bigger brush and brush off whatever you don't want, unless you want the whole thing covered. You know, I've, I've seen that before. Summers around here are pretty rank. Uh, you get a lot of dirt, a lot of dust everywhere. So, I hope this helps y'all. I'm grateful to do this. If you have any questions, please write, please rate, please comment. Um, love being in this modeling community. Y'all are some of the best people I've ever met. Chevy Cheeseburger, you crack me up. You're great. You make fantastic models. You young kids that are out there, they're starting out, and I can't think of your names, but there's a couple of you, two, three of you, that are doing awesome work. Stick with it, man. We're glad to have you in the hobby, and so glad we can see the future of our hobby growing. Um, God bless y'all. Y'all are amazing. You do great work, and uh, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to be part of this community. Peace. Crap, man. You guys, I'm so sorry I forgot to do the underside of the chassis. Now, this is the top side for a pickup that was going to be all rusted. It was the rest of that truck that I was working on a minute ago. So, I'm going to show you the bottom side of the chassis. I'll show you with this sprayer this time. Now, you've got to make sure that you don't flood your model, but you get enough water on it. Got a little too much on it, but I don't care. Big brush. Get a lot on there. I know. You guys are thinking of, well, my, my car ain't that dirty underneath. Well... This isn't going to be how it ends up either. By the way, this is 58 Chevy that uh, will get done this year. And you all see what it turns out like. And it will not look like this, I promise. So, tap that out. You actually want to knock some of the garbage off of it. Now, take your stiff brush. Get a little bit of water in it. Start getting spots that aren't as high. You, uh, when you take your time and do this, because I'm, I'm rushing, I already know how long I've been on. Okay. I got a four wheel drive that I'm sending to Dr. Cranky for the, um, Toothless Zombie Squad, and uh, got bits and pieces of it hit high and low where I'm supposed to, but I just wanted to show you guys this real quick. Um, you know, you look for the high spots and the low spots. This this wouldn't be quite as mucky down here. Your wheel wells would be. Um, your gas tank, you know, your your gas tank could have a... Looking for kind of a stiff brush. Your gas tank could have dirt on it, but you know, it could have a couple of clean scrapes through it where it maybe didn't have all the dirt on it. Um, your frame, your frame would be bits and specks. Now, this right here, part of your, um, I can't think of it, that would be pretty blasted dirty if you're going through dirty roads all the time. But you just move it around, get it wet, you know, if you want to. Uh, down in here, that that be a little bit dirtier than normal. This, the small spaces like this are going to collect a lot of gunk, 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 gunk. It's just not going to, just not going to come out of there. Um, I don't have the model. It's packed, ready to go to the dock. And, uh, I didn't feel like pulling it out tonight. But, uh. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry, you guys, I, I, and I wished I would have been better prepared for this because the chassis is something that you've, you've really got to look at. You've really got to pay attention to your high spots, your low spots, um, especially for those of you guys that do the pickups. 
um, you got to watch your your transmission and your um, gosh darn it your converters and stuff you got to watch your exhaust you got to watch you know where mud would be splattered and stuff if you really want to get this right but anyway I'm, I'm rambling you guys are great thanks so much hope you all have a great night and I'll talk to you tomorrow peace out